Satan, you bow your knee. Satan, you bow your knee. You fall on your face. You fall on your face. What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to the Jay Mokopa podcast. Thank you. Oh, yes. Again, I'm super grateful for everyone who decides to uh, take a couple of their moments in their day or whenever it is that they watch it to listen. And whoever, whoever finds um, value in what this podcast is providing to you. So I'm super happy about that. So if it's your first time here, I want to give you an extra massive. I want to oh, make yes. sure also that if you are one of the people who are always tuning in, you know, guys, I always need to give you also another extra massive. Come on, oh, yes. those things are extra. Um, but in this week, what I did see was a couple people um, were mentioning the podcast and I just saw them on social media. So I thought I wanted to give you guys specific tailor-made podcasts, uh, not podcasts, um, extra massives to you. So um, Tando Motswalo, I want to give you, Tando, thank you for um, what you wrote online this week. Here, here comes your Extra massive, okay. Oh, yes. Atenkosi mafengu. Like, guys, if I'm not pronouncing these things wrong, I really apologize ahead of time. So, but at Atenkosi, I want to make sure I give you an extra massive, okay. Oh, yes. uh, Apple Mokwena, you know, I want to also make sure I give you an extra massive. So, guys, oh, yes. uh, those are all the greetings. Thank you so much. My name is Jay Makopo, and I am super excited about today because today is resurrection sunday and this is what this podcast is going to be surrounded by or that's going to be the center of what we're going to be talking about it's a very important weekend in um, the christian faith um, and just in the world in general so i'm believing that this podcast is going to definitely uh, just bring some light into what uh, Resurrection Sunday is all about, but also, uh, most importantly, uh, to give you uh, more of a desire to get closer to God and just for your relationship with Him to thrive. Um, so uh, I want you guys also just to know that I'm planning on doing some interviews in the podcast going forward, um, which I'm believing are going to be super dope. Uh, so look out for that. But those things are probably going to happen after the whole lockdown is done. Uh, because I want to have those uh, interviews face to face. But let us get into the message. Let's close our eyes and let us pray. God, I come before you. I thank you so much for your love. I thank you so much for your mercy. I pray, God, for everyone who's listening. May you prepare their hearts and their minds to hear from you. I pray may distractions be put aside so that they can receive from you. I pray for myself to God that you give me grace to communicate this message effectively and may it have an impact on all who listen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So um, the title of the message that I'm preaching and I'm going to be speaking to you guys about today on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday is called You Crossed the Line. So let's go to the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 7. Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 7. Just speaking about the day when Jesus uh, had come back to life in power and in victory. So let's read it here. It says, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as 
you were told. Now, the title of the message is You Crossed the Line. Now, lines are very important in life because lines tell us where we must go. Lines tell us where we must stand, where we must position ourselves. And lines also tell us where we must stop. If you think of a child uh, drawing outside of the lines or coloring outside of the lines, it usually means this child is an amateur. They don't really know how to color yet. Or if you're driving on a road, um, the lines, if you don't pay attention to the lines, you can get into an accident. And also, maybe if you're playing sport, you kick the ball continuously outside of the lines. The coach is probably going to change you because you're going to make the team lose. Lines are super important. Now, I'm not just speaking about lines that society lays for us. I'm also speaking about the lines and the guidelines that God gives us for our lives to live a good, holy, righteous, and a a fulfilling and fruitful life. There are lines that God gives us that we must live by. But us as humans, we have the habit of crossing the lines. The Old Testament says about humans that we are like a sheep without a shepherd, constantly crossing the line. The New Testament tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So whether it's old or new, whether it's the past or the, fu- or the future, people have a habit of crossing the lines always now i want to ask you in your life if you're thinking and you're just listening to me can you think and look in your life where you know you know what when it comes to what god wants for my life i recognize that there are places where i have crossed the line there are places where i am not living according to the guidelines of which god has given me or maybe you have friends who crossed the line. I think in every friend group, uh, there's a cross the line friend. You know that one friend who in conversations and stories, they tell you and all whatever has to do with your friend, they are always crossing the line. Um, If you're thinking right now, who is that friend? You don't have a cross the line friend. It's probably because you are the cross the line friend. Okay. It's probably your friends are thinking about you like, yeah, she is the one or he's the, the, you were the cross the line friend always crossing the line. Uh, But Jesus had a cross the line friend and his name was Peter. Now let's look in the Bible. A couple places where Peter would cross the line. Peter would always argue with the the disciples. Uh, Peter would once, there was a time when Jesus was speaking to thousands of people and Peter was basically saying, yo, you spoke too long. So uh, people are tired. Let's send them home uh, because you've been talking too long. Uh, There's a time when Peter, uh, when Jesus was speaking about dying, that Peter literally told Jesus to to shut up and stop talking about dying. There was a time when Jesus was talking about the fact that he's going to be crucified and Peter was like, no, I'm like, if you're going to die, I'm going to die too. Peter was telling Jesus, if you die, I'm dying too. I'm not leaving your side. There was a time when Jesus was walking on water and Peter is like, me too. Like, I want to walk on water too. Like, like, hey, call me to the water. You know, he was always crossing the line. But the, the sad thing about Peter is there was a time when uh, Peter told Jesus, like I said before, that Jesus said, I'm going to die. And Peter said, you know what? If you die, I'm going to die with you. But the time when Jesus was arrested and was about to be crucified, Peter denied Jesus. He didn't stand to his word. Now, he crossed a line that he had for himself. He said that, you know, Jesus, for me and how my life is going to go, I'm going to be this type of a person. I'm going to be someone you can rely on. I'm going to be someone who you can always look at and say, I will be faithful to you. I will stand with you. But Peter crossed a line that he set for himself. The story actually goes when Jesus was taken. Someone comes to Peter and says, hey, man, like he's asked, like, aren't you the guy who was with Jesus? And he's like, nah, I was never with Jesus. Then he's asked again, no, man, I think we've seen you with Jesus. You look like those Jesus guys. And he's like, no, it's not me. Then he's asked the third time. And the third time he even curses. Like he says, I'm not with Jesus. So people will literally think like this guy. Yeah, he's not walking with the the Jesus people. So he, he completely crosses the line of who he said he would be, who the life he said that he would live for God. And I, and I don't know, maybe you can relate to Peter. Have you ever been in a place or are you right now in a place where you're looking at your life and you are currently turning into someone you never thought you would be? Or, or you are currently doing things that back in the days you, you thought you would never be doing these things. You would never respond in these ways. Peter was in that place. Now, 
if you ask Peter, why did you do that? Like, why, Peter? Like, you said you were going to have Jesus' back. You had lines. You had standards. You had plans that you were going to live a certain way. Why did you do this? Peter could have said, bro, they were going to kill me. These guys were going to destroy my life. They were going to crucify me. So I was just protecting myself. That's why I denied Jesus. And, you know, that's something that you can also find yourself doing. You give yourself reasons. No, the reason why I, I crossed that line was because I was angry. The reason I crossed that line was because of my parents did this. The reason I crossed that line was I was depressed. And can I tell you something? That those reasons are just excuses. Like we want to give ourselves a way out. We want to justify why we behave certain ways and none of it is right. The fact is you still cross the line. You're still becoming someone who you said you would not become. Now, in the whole story, there are two characters that are being brought out um, in this time of betrayal of Jesus. There is a Peter and there's also Judas. Now, the difference between these two people is Judas was corrupted in his heart and Peter was broken hearted. He was not, not broken hearted, he was broken. He was in a state of brokenness while Judas was in a place of corruptedness. Let's go to the book of Psalms chapter 51 verse 17. It says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a, a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. Now you see that this is the difference Judas found himself completely away from God while Peter had hope. Why did Peter have hope? Because he was broken on the inside of him. Now, I want you to know the Bible is literally saying here that the sacrifices of God, what, what God desires, what God calls you to have is a broken heart. Is to, is, is to look at the way that you've crossed the line. Look at the wrong decisions you may have made. And if you have a broken heart about it, if you are unhappy with it, God says he will never despise you. God says he will never push you away. God says he will never look at you in a wrong way or have an attitude towards you. He won't despise you if you are in a place of brokenness. You see, Judas didn't was like completely on a wrong path and completely trying to do something wrong. But Peter was in a place where he looked back on what he did and he realized that, hey, I've crossed the line. I want to ask you again, have you crossed the line? Are you in a place where you feel a bit broken about actions you've done, things that you said you would never do? Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 to, 32 to 33. It says, so... Jesus is saying this, so everyone who acknowledges me before man, I will also acknowledge before my father who's in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will deny before my father in heaven. Can you imagine? Can you imagine denying Jesus after you heard him say this? Because Peter most likely was in the place where he had heard Jesus. He was with Jesus when Jesus said, if you deny Jesus before man, then you are going to be denied before the father. Now, Peter must have been in a place where he was completely, again, broken because of his actions. And, you know, sometimes we, we know we should not be doing some things. We've been warned about things, but we still find ourselves doing things that we know we're not supposed to do. And maybe you also can relate to that where you have known sometimes. You know, sometimes you, they say, if you know better, do better. But sometimes you know, but you still sort of do the wrong thing. And that thing can, again, bring a brokenness on you. You know you were not supposed to be in a relationship with that person. You know you were not supposed to go to that place. You know you were not supposed to have those type of influences around you or, do, or be involved in certain activities, but you still did it. And sometimes you can even say, look, have I gone too far? Is there a way for me to come back? And I think Peter could have been in that same place asking himself, can I come back to God? Does God have space for someone like me? Now let's go to John chapter 20, verse 15 to 16. It says, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing he was the gardener. This is when they came, into the, came to the tomb. Supposing he was the gardener. She said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, they just came to the tomb. This is when they came to the tomb. And they thought that there was a man there. They thought it was a gardener, but it was actually Jesus. They didn't recognize that this is Jesus. So, so she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, Tell me where you've laid him so I can take him away. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, 
Rabboni. Now, just the wonderful thing about this, before I get into the point, is Jesus said Mary. You know, I want you to know that Jesus knows your name. Jesus knows where you are. He knows your state. He knows where you're going through. And even when they did not recognize Jesus, Jesus recognized them. You know, there'll be times that you'll be going through things and you may have crossed the line so badly. You may be in such a dark place that you can't recognize Jesus. You can't recognize his voice anymore. I want you to know that he's not forgotten yours. You may be in a place where you say, you know, I'm not in a place where I was with Jesus. I want you to know that his heart towards you has not changed. Isn't that such an encouragement to you that his heart hasn't changed usually it is because you have moved he's not the one who moved god is not the one who's distant from you it's you are the one who may have been distant to god but he knows your name now she, so now when he reveals himself to her she says raboni now raboni means teacher or master but those words were that that title would only be given to to people in uh people who teach the the scriptures who is most likely going to be a priest so a rabboni is something that you would usually call a priest now jesus was recognized as a priest is what i'm trying to get to so jesus he, he was recognized and known as a priest someone who would teach god's word wherever he goes now i want you to know for priests just as we're speaking about you cross the line for priests there were lines that they could not cross there were laws that they had to live by. Now, this is one of the laws that they had in Leviticus in the Old Testament. This is where they got their laws from. Leviticus 21 verse 10 to 11. It says, the high priest was chosen from among his brothers. The anointing oil was poured on his head. In this way, he was chosen for the special job of being a high priest. He was chosen to wear special clothes so that he would not do, so that he must not do Things to show his sadness in public. He must not let his hair grow wild. He must not tear his clothes. And then now this is the point here. It says, he must not make himself unclean by touching a dead body. He must not make himself unclean by touching a dead body. He must not go near a dead body, even if it is his own father or mother. So that's one of the rules. One of the lines as a priest, one of the lines that Jesus was expected to live by is you shall not cross the line. If you are a priest, what line? You shall not be around a dead body. You shall not be, be around anything that is dead. That is a line that God had set for any priest. So there was a line that he should not cross. There was a line that was like, you know what? If someone crosses this line, if, if a dead body, someone who's dead, if they go beyond this line as a priest, don't go there. But look what the Bible says says about us now this is what i want us to bring this is where i want you to just pay attention to what i'm saying jesus is a high priest and there's a line that he should not cross if you have sinned if you have sinned and if you are dead then you he must not cross that line he must not even get near you now what i'm saying is what do you mean if i'm dead Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, it says, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins. The Bible says that if you are apart from God, if you were in your sin, the Bible doesn't just say you are a sinner, you're wrong, you're away from God. The Bible says that if you do not have, if you're not connected to God, you're dead. You are dead in your sin. So what does this say again? So if Jesus is a priest and there is a line for those who have sinned, it means that rightfully speaking, Jesus should not cross the line to get to sinners. Rightfully speaking, Jesus should have just left you when you sin. Jesus should have just said, you know what, if you're going to sin, if you're not going to pay attention, if you're going to cross the line, if you're going to continue to be unfaithful, rightfully speaking, Jesus should have just said, okay, that's the line. That's the law. If you want to cross the line, goodbye, and I'm going to continue living my life. Because the truth is, once again, guys, if since God is God, he doesn't need us. Since God is God, if we go the wrong direction, it's not going to affect him. It's only going to affect us. So there was a line. There was a line that was set in the law of God about priests. Now, you may be listening to me and you're saying, hey, like Jay, like Pastor Jay, um, you don't know the lines that I've crossed. You may be thinking that as you're listening to this um this message and you're saying you know what you like i don't know as i'm speaking to you i don't know what's going on in your life 
And that's the truth. I don't know what lines you've crossed. I don't know how many times you've crossed them. I don't know how far you've gone. But I want you to know that lines are not only something that shows you how far you went from God. Remember I spoke about there's a line of the law. The priest should not go beyond a line of death. Death in sin. There is a line. But lines don't only show you how far you are away from God, but lines also show you how far God is willing to go to get to you. I want to say that one more time. A line does not only show you how far you are away from God, but lines also show you how far God is willing to go in order to get you back because you may be saying that you've gone so far past lines you've you've met like there have been things you've done like maybe you even told yourself certain lines that you said you won't cross maybe there was a point in time when you said you you know you won't be one of those people who get drunk uh, maybe you, there was a place where you said you know i'm not going to be someone who's going to find myself in addictions maybe you said you're not going to be that type of a person maybe you said you're not going to be the type of person to give yourself give your body give your future away and you're finding yourself in those places. And you might, be, you might be saying again, like you've crossed the line too far. But I want you to know that what Easter is all about is that God sent his son and told his son, you know what, there is a line. Rightfully speaking, um, we sh God should not care about sinners. Rightfully speaking, God can say, if you want to be unfaithful, then go away. But instead of letting you cross the line, God says that he is going to cross the line too in order to find you. You may be dead in your sin. You may have made wrong uh, decisions. You may have given your mindset to the wrong paths. But God says that he's not going to allow your sin to separate you, but he will send his son to cross the line and to bring you back into relationship with him. I want you to know, don't count yourself out. I want you to know, don't say you're too far from God. I want you to know, don't say God is not going to come into the dark place that you are in. In actual fact, he has sent his son to run into your darkness and to bring you out, to open your eyes to the fact that you have crossed the line. Can I tell you something? Some people think that in your walk with God, you are in danger when you are far away from God, when you feel far away from God. Even people will come to me as their pastor and say, you know, Pastor Jay, I feel like I am far away from God. And that is actually a good place to be. You know, the dangerous thing is when you think you are close to God. You think, ah, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, like even sometimes sermons about giving your life to God. Some people think, ah, I'm good with God. I'm, I'm all right. But actually, you may actually find people who think they're close to God are sometimes the people who are the furthest away from God because they think that they are all good. So they never check on their heart state. They never check on their words. They never check how they, how they relate to people, how they treat people. But if you're in a place where you're saying you've crossed the line, if you are saying you've crossed the line, you don't know how to get back to God, I want you to know that that is a good thing because it's most likely that God is shining his light on your heart and he is revealing to you where your relationship with him is. And he is saying, come to him. You see, when you feel far away from God, it's a good place to be. You are safe in that place because you know where to go. You know, you know what? I need to come back to him. You know, things need to change. But if you think nothing must change, then you can find yourself continuing going in the wrong direction. So I'll, I want you to know if you're listening to me right now and you are realizing maybe your walk with God went downhill, or maybe you know that you are currently in certain behaviors or you are currently in a pattern of sin that is destroying you or destroying your walk with God, I want you to know that if you've recognized that, see that as a good thing and thank God that you can see that you are far so that now you know what to do. Now you again may be saying, but you can't get over your past. You may be thinking about things you've done, places you've been, and you may be just be saying like, you know what, this this message, maybe it's not for people like you. You know, maybe you're saying this, this message is for other people. And you're thinking about your past. You're thinking about things that you've done, places you've been. Again, as I said, um, I want you to know that God is past your past. Jesus has gone past your past and he's already over your past. And if you are still there, he's waiting for you to make a decision to step into the future. 
You see, God is not focused on the mistakes you've made. He's not looking back on what you've done. He's not looking back on the, the things that have happened behind you. He is standing ahead of you and he's saying, you know what? If you just get back onto the path, you will see me in your life. You will see me in your pain. You'll see me in your struggle. You'll see me even in the good times. You will see me. Jesus says that. I just want to say in read in Mark chapter 16, verse 7. Um, it says, but go tell his disciples and check this out. Check this out. It says, go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. The message is, go tell his disciples and Peter. But Peter was originally a part of the disciples, but the message says, go tell the disciples and Peter. Why does the message come out like that? It's because Peter had gone way past the line. He crossed the line. And Peter was probably thinking that maybe he's not a part of God's people anymore. Maybe Peter was feeling like, you know what, I don't see the reason why I should get closer to Jesus again because I betrayed him. I became someone who he promised he would not become. Maybe you were in the same place where you were saying, you know what, I don't see if, how I can get close to God as I used to be. As I used to be, maybe you're thinking about who you used to be. Maybe you, how your life looked or your outlook on life. And, and you're asking yourself, you don't think you could be that person anymore. And maybe you've, you've decided, you know what, I'm not who I was. I'm a different person now. Maybe Peter was saying, I'm not a disciple anymore. I'm just Peter. So the message comes and says, no, tell the disciples and tell Peter. Tell the person who's crossed the line. Tell the person who's crossed the line that if you just go to Galilee, if you go to the place where I told you to be, if you get back, if you repent, if you change your ways, then you will see God. And that, that is the message that I'm saying to you. You see, the message is Jesus went before. The verse says, but go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you. He's not in your past. He's ahead of you. He's in your future. And God is looking at you and saying, you know what? This is even in this Easter weekend. I died for your sins and I rose again. Now, the significance of Jesus coming back to life is that Jesus over overcame two things that no human can overcome. Number one is sin. Number two is death. He defeated death and he defeated sin. Two things that you cannot defeat, but he defeated it. Then when he comes back on earth to his disciples, when he comes back to life, he says, look, I am ahead. I'm in your future. I'm in the direction you're supposed to go. But I'm reminding you guys, it's Galilee. Jesus told them to go to Galilee, go to Galilee. So there is a life. There are the lines and the guidelines that God has in his word. That we must live by and all you have to do is get back on track and maybe if you realize that you've never been on track is this is a good time for you to say you know what god i'm going to get back on track go to galilee and jesus says that you will be that he will be where he promised to be he will be there in your life where, wherever jesus is there is peace wherever jesus is there is clarity where jesus is there is strength and if you just get back on the path I know you've crossed the line. I know the things that you have done that you were not supposed to do. Even God knows. But he's not holding it against you. He says, he simply says to you, go back, go back to the path that he's called you to. Go back to it. Now, I hope this message reached you. I hope this message reached you. You know, sometimes the hard, the hard thing about, um, the hard thing about, Sorry guys, let me just adjust this. Sometimes the hard thing um, about getting close, closer to God is um, sometimes the closer you get to God, the more you're reminded of the wrong things you've done. I think about Peter, how, how Peter um, had denied Jesus. And I'm sure when he got closer to Jesus, he was being reminded of the wrong that he'd done. And I want you to know that each time you make a decision to get closer to God, the enemy or the negative voices in your head are going to try and remind you of your mistakes. There's going to be negative voices and negative thoughts that are going to tell you, you know what, it's not for you. Remember what you've done. Remember who you were. Remember the past. And there's going to be all these voices that are going to come up to you to try and discourage you from fully giving your life over to God. I want to encourage you. 
to not let those voices have power over you. Don't let those voices overpower the voice of God that is calling you to him. I want you to know that this is Resurrection Sunday and Jesus is alive. He's not just a story in a book. He is real. And when you speak to him, he hears you. And if you give your life over and put your trust in him, then he can call you back onto the right path. And then if you continue moving on the path that he calls you to, you will find peace. You will find life everlasting. And I'd just like to pray for each one of us. For some of you, I'm praying for you. Uh, you were walking with God and maybe your walk with God just sort of died. But this message is reminding you that you may have crossed the line, but Jesus is willing to cross that line and to find you wherever you are at. But for other people, maybe it is a thing of maybe you were not in a relationship with God at all. But maybe through this message, um, you are deciding to begin a new chapter in your life to get to know him and to love him. So let me say this prayer for all of you guys. Father, I come before you. I thank you for everyone who's listening. For those, my God, who maybe have crossed the line and, my God, were living in a life that you have not called them to live by. I pray for everyone who crossed the line and their relationship with God was broken and affected. May you give them life again that they know that they just need to get back on the right path and you will accept them, God. I, I, I also pray, pray for those who want to make a, a fresh decision for you, uh, people who are saying they want to begin a faith journey with you. I pray for them, my God. I pray that they, as they have opened their heart to you, I pray, God, that you would show them um, the path that they should take as they're getting closer to you. Now, if you are saying you want to become uh, one with Christ in your life, you want to accept Jesus in your life, I'm going to ask you to say this short prayer with me. Just close your eyes and say this. Say, Jesus, right now, I give you my life and I ask you to give me your life. Father, right now, I accept the gift that you have given. Father, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And today, by faith, I believe I am forgiven. Teach me to speak like you. Teach me to think like you. And teach me to live like you. I am yours and you are mine. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you said that prayer, and if that, that was the first time you said the prayer, and you, feel, and you feel like you've accepted Jesus in your life, you've made this decision to follow him, please send me a message on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter just to say that that happened. But even if you realize that this message sort of had brought a new life to your walk with God, you can just send me a message and just say, you know what, through the message, uh, it really touched me, and you're getting back on track. You, you've crossed the line, but you're getting back online and getting... Um, on the path that God has called you to be. So again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast. Again, subscribe, rate it, share it with people. And um, last but not least, have a great, great Easter Sunday. I will see you next Sunday for the lockdown season and the podcast. Take care. God is love. Peace out.